It only takes a minute and you won't feel a thing. That's all right. <laughs> OK. It only takes a minute and you won't feel a thing. Right? <laughs> oh, intro to Lenny. <laughs> and now, a man with more brains in his little finger than in his entire head, Lenny Benny! <laughs> Work. Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Punchlines, the show that comes to you on six two five lines. That's about one for each viewer. Uh, time now <laughs> to meet my special star punchline guest this week. Dynamic, irresistible, sexy. Just three of the words used to describe me by the lovely Patty Boulay. <laughs> Here's a man whose hobby is gourmet cooking, and my word, he can be saucy. My old pal, Jack Douglas. Hello, Jack. Lovely when she's wet or when she's dry, our Olympic medalist, here's Sharon Davis. <laughs> here to put the punch in punch lines and we're sure he'll last all four rounds. John Conte, big job. <laughs> Shackled in his box. <laughs> Video king and professional crackpot, Kenny Everett. <laughs> and now, the punchline performer of perfect proportions. Would you believe from the mountains of Morn, Rosemary? <laughs> Unhappily, the, the lovely half of Terry and June could not be with us tonight, but he has sent. <laughs> <laughs> June Whitfield! <laughs> and last but not least, a graduate of the Des O'Connor Charm School, but nevertheless a very <laughs> fine comedian, Paul Tracy! <laughs> Those are my punchline star guests. Time now to meet our two contestants tonight, and they are from Birmingham, Linda Worrell. Say hello to Linda. Hello. Linda works for a kitchen equipment firm. She's married to John, and she has two, two daughters. Uh, any Charles? hobbies? Uh, I think two daughters is enough. <laughs> I suppose it is, really, yes. It's <laughs> none of my business, Linda. No, it's all right. <laughs> Just that it's said on the card, knitting and crocheting. <laughs> <right? laughs> It's a little bit of knitting and crocheting done. As well. OK, yes, fine. OK, well. and, and playing with you tonight as your, your opposition uh, is Sunny. Sunny Sweeting. Say hello to Sunny. <laughs> Sunny comes from Stirling. He lives in York. And where, where, why, why Sunny? Is, is that your real name? I don't know. No, it isn't. Just what I've been christened with, more or less, from being little. From being little. Climb up on my knees, Sunny Boy, I think it comes. Oh, excellent. Fine, fine, sure. yeah. you, I mean, do you have a real first name? Oh, yeah. It's not Engelbert not, or something I'm, like that. No, I'm it? not going to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to tell me? No. I see. Sunny takes the show over already. Yes, fair enough. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the show. To help you, Sunny and Linda, play punchlines, here are your two punchline partners. The lovely Sandra Dickinson and the even more lovely Gareth Hunt. Welcome, welcome, welcome. There we are. Meet your partners. Delight to have you with us, Sandra. Thank you. Not at all. Looking Delighted forward... to be here. Of course you are. Looking forward to the game? Oh, yes. Of course, because you do I'm have sure. that kind of astute, immediate yeah, brain that... Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> indeed. She's not even going to argue. Uh, <laughs> Gareth, welcome indeed. Uh, let's start the game. It's a simple game. You know how it is. I have here... <laughs> What are you doing, Everett? I don't know. What's happening? Neither do I, and I'm the host. OK, uh, let's explain the game. Up there are punchlines, as usual. I have in my hand a piece of paper, which might bring us peace in our time, but will probably bring us a lot of madness. Uh, these are the questions. We ask our contestants to match up the correct question to the correct punchline. <laughs> Ten points for each one. 150 will be the winner. Let's start. Punchliners, let's hear our punchlines. Will you lay me an egg? Shall I tell you a filthy story? If you struggle, I'll tie you up. Shall I wake you with a kiss? <laughs> I won't fall off this time. It only takes a minute and you won't feel a thing. <laughs> Have you seen my coolies? <laughs> I'm one of the peculiar people. <laughs> Aren't we all? OK. Uh... Those are the punchlines. I should warn you, one of them is a red herring. Linda, you won the toss, and you have the first question. Find me the punchline to this. Before the race, His Royal Highness, Prince Charles, looked at the stable girl, and what did Prince Charles say, Linda? Well, purely guessing. Um, number five. You say number five, and that's Rosemary. Prince Charles to a stable girl? 
Will you lay me an egg? <laughs> That's no offence, Your Royal Highness, nothing. <laughs> I just read them out, I don't write them. Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, the dentist reassured the nervous patient when he said... Number seven. You say number seven, dentist to a nervous patient? June. If you struggle, I'll tie you up. <laughs> Clever thought, but not quite right. Hard luck. OK, uh, Gareth, first time in the game, the handsome prince smiled at Sleeping Beauty and said... Number four. Number four with the deep brown voice, Big John. I think I'd give it away. Shall I wake you with a kiss? Shall I wake you with a kiss? Correct. Well done, Gareth. First points on the board, ten to Gareth and Linda. We stay with you because you got it right. Linda, Bernard Manning, you remember him. Yes. Turn to Mary Whitehouse. <laughs> Turn to Mary Whitehouse. What did he say? Well... Bernard Manning to Mary Whitehouse. What do you think he'd say? Number one. Number one, Patty? I won't fall off this time. I won't fall off this time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I see. Uh, Sandra, Sandra, the farmer looked at his prize hen. What did he say? Um... Ah, I know what it is, but I can't figure who it is. Uh... Three! Yep. <laughs> Gareth gave you a clue. Go ahead, Sharon. Have you seen my coolies? <laughs> That wasn't nice of you, Gareth. He did that on purpose. That was rotten of you. OK. Can I get it back? You threw what? My puff. Your puff? Can I come and get it? Of course you can. Yes. What is it? Your, your own personal powder puff? Yeah. I wonder what it was. I knew something, something hit me. There we are. Not at all. Pleasure. Pleasure. Yes. I mean, you can't imagine him as an Avenger, can you? Right. Imagine beating people up and saying, I've got to stop now and powder my nose. Right. Gareth, it is your turn. The member of the strange-sounding religious sect introduced himself to the vicar's wife and said... <laughs> uh, Sandra, you can only play with your own teeth. Oh, sorry. Not being rude, darling. All right, take a chance. One. You say one. <laughs> Patty? I won't fall off this time. I won't fall off this time. Because <laughs> so that would be a strange religious sect, yes. Uh, Sonny, uh, you haven't scored yet, but I'm sure you will this time. When his labourers didn't turn up for work, the Chinese employer said to his secretary... Mm. Mm. Number three. Oh, you sound fairly confident. Sharon, what did the Chinese employer say to his secretary? Have you seen my coolies? Have you seen my coolies? Yeah. I wasn't quite sure that that was your punchline. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, here we go. Before the race. Now we're going back to the original questions because they haven't answered them all correctly. Uh, score, 10-10. Long game, folks. Uh, Prince Charles looked at the stable girl, Sandra. What did he say? One. One? Prince Charles to the stable girl, Patty? Ha! <sighs> I won't fall off this time. Of course he won't <laughs> fall off this time. <laughs> Still with your side, Sonny. The dentist reassured the nervous patient when he said... What would your dentist say if you were nervous? I'll try number six. You try number six. <laughs> this is a recording. I'm out at the moment. Still never mind. <laughs> <laughs> You're right! Yes, yes. You're uh, right! Kenny Everett, who, of course, can be reached, care of Brampton. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Kenny! I think she's won, you know. Now, the dentist reassured the nervous patient when he said, Kenny. It only takes a minute and you won't feel a thing. Correct. Well done. <laughs> 30 points to 10. Still with you, Sandra. Bernard Manning turned to Mary Whitehouse. What did he say? What would dear old Bernard say? I think probably number seven. I'm not quite sure. I suppose he could say anything, really. <laughs> Bernard Manning to Mary Whitehouse? Two. You think number two? Uncle Jack Douglas. <laughs> what did Bernard Manning, <laughs> somebody that Jack really admires, say to Mary Whitehouse? Uh, sorry, who swore? <laughs> Nobody swore, I just said Bernard Manning. You did swear. Oh, beg your pardon. <laughs> Bernard Manning, shall I tell you a filthy story? Really? Well done, Jack. <laughs> now you're getting the swing of things. 40 points to 10. The farmer, Sonny, looks at his prize hen. What did he say? Farmer to a prize hen. You know what farmers are? Number five. Number five, Rosemary. Will you lay me an egg? Will you lay me an egg? Now you're getting into the idea. <laughs> this, this really is a difficult one. The member of the strange-sounding religious sect introduced himself to the vicar's wife 
and sad. Sandra. She's concentrating. Mm -hmm. I'm concentrating. You certainly are. Seven? You say seven? June? If you struggle, I tie you up. <laughs> no. Good try. Good try. Good try. Of course it was a good try. It loses anyway, but never mind. <laughs> Linda, same question to you. Member of the strange sounding religious sect. Um, to the vicar's wife. The vicar's wife. Yes. Um, Isn't it difficult when you look at the ball? Yes. It is. Take your time. Number eight. You say number eight. Paul, tell us. I'm one of the peculiar people. I'm Did one of the it? peculiar people. Well done. Yeah. Because there is, there, is a, there is this, believe it or not, a strange religious sect that call themselves the Peculiar People. Yes, there's a whole copy of them here at London Weekend Television, but that's beside the point. Who had the, uh, who had the red herring then? I'm afraid I did. It was a rather popular one, wasn't was it, it? darling? If you struggle, I'll tie you up. Yes, of course. If you struggle, I'll tie you up. Red herring to June Whitfield. OK, I'll well, how's the score? Everything. 50 points to 20. Uh, anything can happen. Let's move into our second round. Second round, as usual, we ask our punchliners to give us their punchlines, and then they change places. But the punchline remains in the same place. What you heard and where you heard it. OK, punchliners, your punchlines, please. Eat it for breakfast. Stick pins in it. Hit it with a hammer. Change its nappy. <laughs> Wipe your nose on it. Put it in the fish tank. <laughs> Kick it down the street. Play with it in the bath. <laughs> Those are our punchlines, all sort of things that one could do if one hadn't got anything better at the time. <laughs> the scores, 50-20. And before we do go into our guessing game, let's ask our punchliners to all change places. could make two up three stairs and still lose his way. Well done, Ken. You happy? Safe there? Hello down there. Very well <laughs> indeed. OK, uh, we have our punchlines up there. Remember where you heard them, folks. Uh, it's sunny to go, sunny. What might you do to make a baby stop crying? Number three. You say number three, Paul? Wipe your nose on it. <laughs> Wipe your nose on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we go to Gareth. Gareth, what might you do with a piranha fish? Four. You say four. Rosemary. Put it in the fish tank. Put it in the fish tank. Well done. Ten points. <laughs> Linda, what might you do with a kipper? A um, kipper. Number two. Number two, Sharon. Play with it in the bath. Oh. Play with it in the bath. <laughs> Whatever turns you on. OK, uh, Sandra, what might you do with a rubber duck? Number two. Oh, that was quick. Number two, <laughs> Sharon. Play with it in the Play bath. Play with it in the bath, indeed. Go your side. Sonny, what might you do with a football? Number six. You say number six. June? Change its nappy. <laughs> <laughs> well, good enough. Try, why not? Uh, Gareth, what might you do with a pincushion? Uh, eight. Number eight. Stick Patty. pins in it. Stick pins in it. Well done. <laughs> Yeah, very good, Gareth. Yeah. Linda, what might you do with a handkerchief? Has Number been out. three. Number three, quick as a flash. Paul? Wipe your nose on it. Wipe your nose on it. 60-50, only ten points in it. Uh, we go back to one we've already heard, uh, and it's Gareth. Gareth, what might you do to make a baby stop crying? You can confer, because all the questions have been asked. <coughs> Number six, please. I wasn't quite sure whether she was advising her breathing in your ear then. Uh, <laughs> you were doing both. Good luck to you. OK, Gareth says, number six, what do you make a baby do to stop crying, June? Change its nappy. Change its nappy, is right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do with your side. 60-60, neck and neck. And we're going to ask Linda now what she might do with a kipper. You have this one. Oh, yes. Um... Number one. Number one. Squeeze its middle buttock. Ken, <laughs> are you making up your own punchlines up there? Yeah. You must read out... You're not. You must read out the one you're given. You know that, don't oh. you? Oh. Fiddle-dee-dee. 
What was the question? The question which I, I put to Linda was, what might you do with a kipper? And Le Linda responded to that question, uh, I'd like to know uh, what Mr. Everett had to say. And you Mr. Everett it, would say... You hit it with a hammer, of course. Hit it with a hammer? Mm. I see. I have to tell you, Linda, that isn't correct. <laughs> I preferred the middle butter. <laughs> I believe so. Right, um... <laughs> Sandra, you're not to nod off, it's not fair. Um, Sandra, what might you do with a football? It's yeah. tense, isn't it? It's it really is tense, tense. yes. Very tense. Yes, you can feel the excitement mounting well, by the moment. Sonny seems to think it's number five. Uh, are you prepared to believe him? No, but I'm not. <laughs> you go ahead with it, okay. Number five, what might we do with a football, Jack? And he's right, kick it down the street. Kick it down the street. OK, final question this round, 70-60. Uh, what might you do with the kipper? It must be number seven. It must be number seven, says you. Big job. Eat it for breakfast. Eat it for breakfast is correct. <laughs> Who had the red herring that time? Red herring? Oh, that's me. Hit it with a hammer? Yes, that is you. Yes. Thank you. Yes, it sort of figures it would be you. Yeah. <laughs> Do you enjoy having a red herring? It's great up here. Uh, okay, uh, <laughs> end of the first half, ladies and gentlemen, the score at 80 points to 60 in favour of Sonny and Sandra. We'll take a break now while uh, Rosemary and Kenny Everett have an opportunity to discuss their naughty bits. So we'll be back <laughs> in the shakes with some more punchlines. Thank you. in Martin Place most weekdays you'll find live entertainment like this in the amphitheatre. It's just part of what makes it Sydney's favourite lunchtime spot. Several years ago though the talk probably wasn't all about what sort of morning they'd had because in New South Wales at that time there was an extraordinary rumour about a margarine. This rumour was so rife that questions were even asked in the New South Wales Parliament about the product. People were saying they didn't believe it was a margarine, its taste was that good. You know it now, it's made in the UK as Krona Margarine, and it would be interesting to know if it's causing as much talk in Britain as it did here. Krona.